Further speakers, Councillor Zimprogno. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Let me pick my way carefully through this, if I can. My position has been from the beginning that the um, the Grace River Bridge has been delayed and delayed and delayed, that the VPA inked by an earlier chamber and by one of your predecessors, Mr. Mayor, was weak. It left us in, in, in a, a very poor negotiating position. We were effectively over a barrel. All the developer ever needed to do was to say, well, we want another delay or we want this amendment or that. And all we could do is uh, agree to that because what was the alternative? The alternative is that they stump up an amount of cash that's far less than the cost of construction with no commitment from the state government that they'd ever come to the party and they'd walk away. Not good for the community. And it was a poor agreement, a very poor agreement. Nevertheless, now that Red Bank is a reality, we have a real obligation to get the best outcome for the community that we can. So every time the developer comes to us and says the market's sluggish, or we couldn't get our approvals from Sydney Water or whatever the excuse was, legitimate or otherwise, all we could do is agree to the further delay and further delay and further delay. Here's the reminder that I often offer at this juncture. Under the terms of the original VPA, the sweetener that was offered to the community to tolerate the Red Bank development, in terms of the number of lots sold, the bridge should have been open by now. There should be traffic on it today. And here we are in the year 2022, still speculating about when it might occur off into the future. It, it makes us look really bad. And now to compound that, we have the situation where a family with a legitimate grievance says, I don't think this is terribly fair. It's running through our house. And at the risk of evoking a pop culture metaphor, that's a really bad vibe, isn't it? Often you have to acquire private properties to get critical infrastructure through. And moral leadership in that sense involves making very difficult choices and compensating people fairly for the acquisition of their property because there's a greater good to be serviced. And yet the Wilcoxes have come to us and said, we don't know why it couldn't have gone around our property. There's plenty of vacant land on either side. It's not as though we are tightly constrained by the uh, unavailability of land or the topography. And now we see evidence that certain landowners were given grace or favour or effectively quarantined from their um, land being acquired to get the best outcome and to have the smallest impact unfairly on, on, on individual farms or, or, or homes or families. I mean, it's better for it to go through vacant land than it is for it to go through somebody's home especially if it's your home. And I want to see what we can do to help that family. If it turns out that the general manager is correct in her speculation, that at some point there was a desire to minimise the number of properties acquired, that's understandable. And I don't blame the developer for not wanting to build a bridge that was more expensive than it needed to be. But our responsibility here is to the broader community. And it's worth remembering that the developer is on the hook for the cost of the bridge and the approach roads, regardless of what the cost is. So if it costs a little bit more to engage in some additional partial property acquisition, not whole properties, but just the edges of certain properties so that the camber of that road can be brought around their house, then I think that that needs to be revisited. The question is this, whether any amendment to the recommendation that's before us this evening is the appropriate mechanism to pursue that end. There's a lot of other stuff that's not locked in stone. And I rather think that on behalf of our community, we should push back a little because we've been absolutely supine to date and it doesn't reflect well on us. But I'd like some guidance from staff about whether <coughs> any amendment that asks the developers to or asks the, the various parties to this to readdress this question about whether a compliant road that has the right curves and cambers and all the rest of it could be constructed if the envelope of property acquisition were changed. And if the answer to that question is yes, in the technical sense, then I'd probably endorse that as an amendment to this motion. Thank you. I'll just um, pass that to the general manager. Just add, 
Another question for context, because I think something might have been lost in the translation there. Um, that options report that's been looked at um, recently, I don't believe, and I'll ask you to confirm that there was any instruction given to avoid any particular properties in that in that options analysis. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Sorry, uh, and I might just double check with Mr. Kearns, but certainly um, it was my understanding that that there was no particular instruction given on that. If I can um, address Councillor Zampronio's um, questions, perhaps by um, articulating how the design. Um, and the route alignment came to be, perhaps. Um, and um, as I understand it, the um, we've got a critical fixed point at the intersection with Springwood Road as the um, point at which the intersection with the Springwood Road provides the highest level of flood immunity. So um, then working back off that, what I, what I call a fixed point that we're working back off. We then, um, using uh, appropriate road designs um, and um, Australian standards, have to provide a, a bridge and approach that provides minimal curvature um, on that. What um, that, that effectively means is any um, design of a, of a bridge um, and approach roads that avoids the entirety of the Wilcox property needs to um, both reduce flood immunity to the bridge and also um, is likely to require the realignment of the approach road on Gross River Road um, a, a fairly substantial way to the north on Gross River Road, um, potentially resulting in acquisitions of multiple um, multiple partial acquisitions of, of Gross River Road further up, um, potentially five, six or so um, properties up there. That's that's one hypothesis, but that's one potential option that would see the, the, the Wilcox family property um, left as it is. Um, earlier this year, um, an options analysis was prepared by Red Bank Communities um, in order to ascertain whether it was possible um, to retain the Wilcox family home. Um, there was not an option tabled in that analysis that kept the entirety of, of the property. Um, that analysis um, was undertaken. Um, we uh, had that looked at. Um, Transport for New South Wales um, had a look at those three particular options and in accordance with the recommendations of that report, Transport for New South Wales advised that those three particular options introduced um, more complex road geometry, um, created unnecessary complexity into the design that could compromise safety and that the, the current design was more appropriate. So, um, can a bridge be designed that um, avoids the, the Wilcox family property? Absolutely. But there are compromises that would need to be made there, both in terms of flood immunity and the, the um, substantially more number of properties that would need to be um, subject to partial acquisition in order, in order to make that road work. Thank you. Is there further discussion, Councillor Sanfrogno? Uh, thank you for the comprehensive explanation. I'm, I'm going to take that as a no uh, as the answer to my substantive question. Could any amendment <clears throat> practically force that, that question to be revisited? Um, I mean, if, if the process of exhibition removes the possibility of any such change, then why are we bothering to go through the exhibition process? I would hope that nothing is so locked in as that a process of exhibition and a compelling submission that says, look, it's possible for you to do this and it's incumbent on the developer to deliver on uh, what the parties agree to, even if it costs a little more. I, 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 don't, I, I, don't, I don't mind that outcome, but I'm, I'm still listening.